Good morning. Good morning, Bethel family. We are very grateful that you're worshiping with us this morning. What a year, huh? So before we start, I have an announcement for you all. Our annual meeting will be on Sunday, January 31st at 7 p.m. It is going to be Zoom, so we've, we'll get used to it now, I hope. Um, at this meeting, we'll have, you know, the congregation will hear reports and then vote on approving the, the budget as well. So um, please put this in your calendar and uh, we have more information in the bulletin for you to read. I know we've been gathering home. It feels so far away, but we close because... The worship bring us together but before we start let's invite the holy spirit to come um, within us by taking a deep breath together the spirit that connects us with one another and allows us to see one another as human beings regardless our flaws you know imperfect imperfection and the messy people we are the spirit that gives life the life that, when it's taken away from, a, from one, affects all of us. We are here to receive Christ. We are called to proclaim Christ. We are sent to show Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us in all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to live to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. In the world. Amen. Our opening hymn is on page 6, Love Has Come.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature, and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson today is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, reading from verse 10 through to chapter 62, verse 3. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown, in, in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Here ends the first lesson. Our psalm for today is Psalm 148. Alleluia, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise God in the height. Praise the Lord, all you angels, sing praise, all you hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon, sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded and they were created who made them stand fast forever and ever, giving them a law that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth. You see monsters and all dips, fire and hail, snow and fog, temperatures, wind, doing God's will, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, Sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all faithful servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near the Lord. Alleluia. Our second lesson this morning is taken from the book of Galatians, chapter 4, reading verses 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Here ends our second lesson. At this point, we will continue with our prayer requests for today. 
Lord of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. Please pray for Renee, Bob, Neil and Linda, Anne, Michaela, Kevin, Sophia, Ken, Virginia, Don, Art, Jackie, Cecilia, Richard and Vicky, Ethel, Liam, Doris, Myrtle, Maria, Paul, Karen, Don, Tyler, Eloise, Tom, Carol, Dolly, Ian, Kristen, Shirley, Pat, Connor and family, Pamela, Susan, Neil, Deirdre, John and Colleen, Alyssa, Albert, Lisa, John, Sammy, Brent, Wayne and finally Jill. We pray for hope, comfort, help and healing as we deal with COVID-19 in our nation and in our world. We remember those who are most vulnerable to the disease, as well as those who are struggling with the many challenges of everyday life in a pandemic. We thank you for helping and protecting those who have fought the wildfires in our area. And we ask for your care for those who are recovering from the destruction. Give your church unity. Inspire all the baptised with the mind of Christ. Where the church is powerful and where it struggles. Shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. We remember all those who risk their lives for others in the line of duty. And we ask that you bless them and their families as they serve to protect and help us. We pray that you bless the work of the Sierra Pacific Synod of the ELCA, Bishop Mark Holmerud and the Synod staff in bringing the light of Christ's grace and salvation to our world. We pray for our church, Lord, for Pastor Mitch, our church council, our church staff members, our COVID-19 reopening committee, and the people of, of Bethel as we worship and serve together. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs> The Holy Gospel according to Luke, translated into Spanish. Cuando llegó el día en que según la ley de Moisés, ellos deberán purificarse. José y María llevaron al niño a Jerusalén para presentarlo al Señor. Así lo hicieron para cumplir con la ley del Señor, que dice, siempre que el primer hijo sea varón, deberán dedicárselo. También fueron a ofrecer el sacrificio 
que manda la ley del Señor. ¿Qué dice? Un par de torturas o dos pinchones. En aquel tiempo había en Jerusalén un hombre llamado Simón, que era justo y piadoso. Vivía con la esperanza que Dios libertara a Israel. El Espíritu Santo estaba con él. Y le había hecho saber que no moriría sin antes ver al Cristo del Señor. El Espíritu Santo guió a Simón y fue al templo. Cuando los padres del niño Jesús lo llevaron para cumplir con la costumbre que manda la ley, Simón lo tomó en sus brazos y alabó a Dios, diciendo, Ahora, soberano Señor, tu palabra se ha cumplido. Ya puedes dejar que este, tu sirvio, muera en paz. Porque mis ojos han visto tu salvación. La que has preparado a la vista de todos los pueblos. Es la luz que alumbrará las naciones y la gloria de tu pueblo Israel. As the child's mother and father stood there marveling at the things that were being said. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, the mother, This child is destined to be the downfall and the rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that is rejected, so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare, and a sword will pierce your heart as well. There was a woman named Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, who was also a prophet. She had lived a long life, seven years with her husband and then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, worshiping day and night, fasting and praying. Coming up at that moment, she gave thanks to God and talked about the child to all who anticipated the deliverance of Jerusalem. And when the couple had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of God, they returned to Galilee and their own town of Nazareth. The child grew in size and strength. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was with him. Word of God, word of life. Praise Thanks be Lord. to God. Let's pray. Loving and gracious God, we are on a journey with you, receiving the good news of the birth of Christ once again, to hear that good news and to wonder how it will take root and grow in our lives, how it will become a part of all that we are, how it will help us as we encounter those who are waiting and waiting to hear of the good news of the birth of Jesus. Still these many years later, to hear that news in a way that helps them know that you are not so far away as they might have imagined, to hear that good news in such a way as they see Christ in us, for us to remember and hear that good news so that we see the Christ in all. Bless us and encourage us on this journey with Jesus. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The sermon here is on page 10. In his temple now behold him.
Friends in Christ, grace and peace be with you from God, who is our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. I think of all the lessons of the church year, this one story about Mary and Joseph bringing Jesus to the temple and then running across these two prophets who have been waiting and waiting and waiting. Simeon and Anna, trusting that someday God's promise of salvation and deliverance for God's people would be realized in their seeing, in their lifetime. How long had they waited? Well, quite a long time. And how long have we been waiting? As we journey through this time of 2020, coming now close to the end, or maybe just now on the other side of that, breathing a sigh of relief, looking forward to something new and different, hoping and praying that the next year will be an opportunity for us to live into a a different reality than we face in these last nine months of 2020, enduring a coronavirus pandemic, hearing stories of the loss of loved ones well before their time. Some loved ones, some family, some friends who are quite close to us. We're ready for good news. We're ready for something new. We're ready for God's grace to be made known and to be clearly seen in ways that may have been a little more hidden in these last months. What was it about Mary and Joseph and the child that stood out amongst all the other parents who were bringing their children to the temple that day? What was it about the spirit of God that had imbued Simeon and Anna with the wisdom and the vision to see this child as God's salvation long promised. And yet they spoke boldly, confidently, that this, in fact, was the child that Israel had been waiting for, was the Savior that generations, hundreds of years of Israelites had been hoping and praying would come to pass the birth of their Savior. Let's move it into a more personal place, though. Mary, who carried this child, whose greeting from the angel Gabriel was startling and yet at the same time encouraged her to say simply, let it be to me according to thy will. That kind of faith on a very deep and personal level is something that I suppose many of us aspire to, to be able to say yes to God's plan with such faithfulness for whatever God's plan may be in our lives. And she and Joseph carried out that plan of God that was still quite unknown to them where this would lead. And, and after the birth of Jesus in that stable in Bethlehem, and after they presented Jesus, they went to their hometown of Nazareth. And there we read that that child that Mary carried, that Mary birthed, that Mary brought to the temple to dedicate to God, grew and became more filled with God's spirit and wisdom. Birthing a child Carrying a child, raising a child, inevitably leads to another kind of birthing, something that's hard for some parents to do and yet is necessary to let that child grow into the world, to let that child go into adulthood, to let that child make the mistakes and fall down and and have to get up again, to watch that happening. Sometimes that is so hard. And Mary was warned of this by Simeon. As Simeon talked about this child, the one who would be the rising and the falling of many in Israel, and that a sword would pierce her soul too. The word I come to at that moment is pondering, that at the birth of the child in Bethlehem, when the shepherds came and gave their witness there, There was pondering that Mary did of the words she had heard, and I can only imagine the pondering that she did every step of the way back to Nazareth, having heard the words of Simeon and Anna about this child, Jesus. 
How would she ever be able to let him go? How would she ever let him be what the angel Gabriel had said he would become, the salvation of many? How do we take that risk in the birth of Christ growing in our soul, leading us to places that we might not have thought we would be able to go, touching people in their lives that are waiting to hear of the birth and the good news and the grace that Jesus Christ brings into the world and that we become those who make that visible. Letting that word, that literal word of God grow in us and grow from us to make a difference in the world. Letting that, that birth become real in and through us. And then trusting that, that how that spirit of Christ has blessed us and encouraged us and challenged us and moved us and prodded us to be in places that we might not ever have thought we could be as we follow Jesus in faith. To know that it is that same journey that Mary and Joseph were on. And that Mary eventually standing beneath the cross, watching her son die for the sake of the world, knew finally what it was that Simeon had meant about her own soul being pierced. And yet beyond that cross, beyond those three days, beyond the rising of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, the new birth of Christ, to assure us of God's plan of grace and salvation. Mary was the forerunner of this journey for us as well. As we live now into these days after Christmas and into the new year, hopeful of how God's plan will be revealed in ways that we have perhaps yet to see, let us be a part of that revelation. Let us be a part of that revealing. Let us be a part of the hope and confidence that God has called us to live into in this new year in a new hope, in new peace and new trust. May God bless us and encourage us as we receive this news and let it have life in us. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pon Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, the banquet is ready for you all. Sibling in Christ, the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard, to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst. Guide by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star. Bless you this day. To the Word made flesh. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. The closing hymn is on page 11, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. Be safe, share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God.